I've been thinking about, because I've been preparing another message for the service tomorrow, and I've been thinking a lot about Doris being home. Amen? Amen. She don't have to worry about nothing no more. Amen. 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 All, all the pain is gone. Amen. All the worries are gone. She ain't got to worry about paying taxes. Mm. That used to Amen. stress her right Ooh, out. No, she, <laughs> I think this one says she stops worrying. That used to so stress Doris right out when it's taxed. <laughs> She, she ain't got to worry about that anymore. She wouldn't work on my taxes. She wouldn't do nothing but that. Oh, that was something else. <laughs> no more taxes. No more bills. No more Amen. doctor appointments. You. you know what I mean? No more moving up and down. You know, I'm going to miss in my Bible study at the Senior Citizen Center. But I was thinking about that. And, you know, we are all going to have to go that route one day. Yes, all of us. Yeah. You know. And I hope that we're ready when the time comes. Life is wonderful, and we all love to live it and enjoy it. But we need to also prepare for when it is over. And in life, we have struggles. But we don't give up, because we live as, as people of hope. We have the hope that we will spend eternity with God. Amen? And this body will give out. Oh, Amen. Yeah, oh, it doesn't do the things it used out. to do 40 years ago, <laughs> 50 years ago. See, I can say that because I'm in a bracket. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds so much, you know what I mean? But I'm living now where I'm in a place where I say constantly, how did this happen so fast? Yeah. Isn't that something? It's like it just goes. And we need to be ready. And I'm constantly going to be asking you, are you making your calling an election show? We can get so caught up, but don't get so caught up that you forget what happens at the end. Let's not forget that Jesus is coming back. He is coming back again. Let's not forget that there is a place called heaven. Let's not forget that there is a place called hell. Amen? Amen? Let's not forget that we're supposed to treat one another a certain way. Amen. Let's not forget that if we want to live God's best for us, then we have to have a relationship with Him. Yes. All of us understand that relationships mean something. And those of you that are married know, without communication and constantly being in contact with your significant other, there is no relationship. If you want it to work and be in a good place, then you communicate, then you stay in contact, then you talk, then you spend time. If you don't, then you know the other side. Frustration, yeah. anger, unforgiveness, bitterness, don't know how to talk to one another because you've lost that connection. It's the same thing with our relationship with God. If we don't spend time with Him, we're going to lose that connection. We're not going to respond to Him in a right way. We're not going to respond to each other in a right way. Amen? Amen. So this morning I want us to turn our Bibles to 2 Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter 4. We're going to be reading a few verses from this chapter. But I want to start off with the 16th verse to the 18th verse. 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I'm going to be reading from verse 16. Oh, here we are. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Verse 16. That is why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. For our present troubles are small and won't last very long, yet they produce for us a glory, excuse me, that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. So we don't look at the troubles we can see now. 
Rather, we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. For the things we see now will soon be gone, but the things we cannot see will last forever. Amen? Amen. Two people that I spent a lot of time with and that I've been close to have recently gone, and that is Judy Simmons and Doris Malcolm. And I, and I, because I spent so much time with them, and they talk so much about heaven and going there, and you know, the reality even sinks in even more. And I found myself, and this may sound a little weird, a little jealous, I, I guess. I said, because they, they're there. There's no more questions, you, you know what I mean? And all the mystery is gone, you know? Not that I want to drop down dead right now because I want to live, you understand? <laughs> you understand? But it, it, it's just nice to know that they are there. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? It's like people you know, now they're there. Yeah. The things we talked about, now they know. The questions they had, they, they have the answers. And it, 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 it brings to the reality that one day, it's going to happen to me. It's a reality. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen to everyone. Amen? Amen? And we go through struggles, we all do, but there's nothing to compare with what is to come. Amen? Amen. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of God will last forever. All of us go through circumstances and trials. We have successes. We have failures. And we start to see life differently. As we grow older, we realize that we spend so much time on foolishness, worrying about so much crap. Amen? Amen. Amen? Because what's important at 20 is a joke at 60. Mm -hmm. Much less 80. That's right. <laughs> Amen? Amen? But it takes time to understand that. We try to instill that in the younger ones in the church. Because if they could get it younger, they would stop wasting so much time. The time that we wasted. But a lot of times we all have to buck our own toe and go through our own experiences. Mm -hmm. Paul says so much in this fourth chapter that is so powerful for the serious believer. He says this ministry that we have, we receive it because of God's mercy. Now, if we go to verse 1 in the fourth chapter, it says, Therefore, since God in his mercy has given us this new way, we never give up. We reject all shameful deeds and underhanded methods. We don't try to trick anyone or distort the word of God. We tell the truth before God, and all who are honest know this. If the good news we preach is hidden behind a veil, it is written only from, from people, it is hidden only from people who are perishing. Satan is the God of this world. And he has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. They are unable to see the glorious light of the good news. They don't understand this message about the glory of Christ, who is the exact likeness of God. I'm going to go drop down to verse 7. We now have this light shining in our hearts, but we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power is from God, not from ourselves. We are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. Through suffering, our bodies continue to share in the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may be also may also be seen in our bodies. Yet we live under constant danger of death because we serve Jesus so that the life of Jesus will be evident in our dying bodies. So we live in the face of death,
But this has resulted in eternal life for you and I. Just another way of saying we live in this world but not of this world. Because this is the devil's realm. And because of sin and disobedience, we are now all experiencing things that God never wanted us to experience. Amen? Amen. But because we have him, the Holy Spirit empowers us to when we get knocked down, get back up. And we don't give up because we have a hope of what comes at the end. We know how this ends. Amen? Amen. So we go through. I keep saying our gospel is not one of avoidance, but one of endurance. We go through because of sin. We have to. It's already done. But Jesus came. He made, became the sacrifice. We have now been redeemed back to God. But we still have to live here on this planet among sinful people doing sinful things. But he gives us principles that we should live by so that we can live his best for our lives. If that's what we want. Amen? Amen? And then we get through these difficult circumstances brought about by people who don't care about God, don't think about God, and because of sin, which brought selfishness, we got people who are only thinking about themselves, and a lot of times when they want what they want, that crosses your path and causes stress to you and me. Amen? Amen. But God gives us what we need to even endure that. Because life is still a blessing. Do you all hear me, family? In spite of, life is still a blessing. So because of God's mercy and grace, we don't give up. Those of us who truly seek and understand the things of God realize that we are clay pots. And that there is a treasure in us. Even though sometimes we may be cracked, we're in the potter's hands. He repairs us. He fixes us. He gives us what we need so we can still be that beautiful vessel that he created. Amen? Amen. We may be squeezed, but we are not squashed. Amen? Amen. I think about Doris and her little frail body. Every time you pick her up there, she said, oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Fragile. Amen. But still special. Fragile. But still special. You hold on. You are beautiful. God created us. And in spite of the things we go through, we are still treasures to him. We always bear in our bodies the mark of the Lord. Verse 10 and 12 says that. It says, verse 10, where is it? Though suffering, our bodies continue to share in the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may, be, may also be seen in our bodies. Yes, we live under constant danger of death because we serve Jesus, so that the life of Jesus will be evident in our dying bodies. So we live in the face of death, but this is the result, resulting in eternal life for you and I. We know we belong to Him. And no matter what we go through, we know what the end is. You know what I mean? We know what's going to happen. But let's drop down to verse 16. What does it say? It says, this is why we what? <laughs> this is why we what? <clears throat> Never give Never give up. Though our bodies are dying, this tent, our spirits are being renewed every day. Now, that happens when we stay in contact. Are you all hearing me? Because it's the spirit that lives on. This only can take so much. That is why we need to stay in con constant contact with God. The more we read, the more we pray, the more we meditate, our spirits are being renewed. That's why we can take the stuff that our body can't take. Even when this is failing, we can still say, thank you, God. I look forward to being with you. Absent from this body, present with the Lord. <clears throat> I got um, 
what that what's that that hurts your, your um, rheumatism? People with rheumatism they have pains and all of that. But even with that, they still can say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The artist used to say, God loves you, Jesus loves me, and God loves you. She believed that, even in her frailness. Renewed mind. Your mind is stayed on him. Your body is going to go. You can have this lift, that lift, this cut off, that put on. I <laughs> you laugh. <laughs> But the mind, the spirit, lives on, is renewed. That's a powerful statement, family. Because in spite of the heaviness that comes from being in this world, we don't give up, we don't faint, we never give up. No matter how hard it gets, we never give up. Never give up. No matter how lonely it gets, we never give up. No matter how squeezed we are, how difficult our circumstances may be, we still have hope. No matter how difficult our trials get, how heavy our burdens get, we should always declare that nothing is going to keep me from the saints of God, assembling and being encouraged through the word, worshiping, with other believers. Nothing is going to keep me from giving God praise. Nothing is going to keep me from raising my hands, lifting my voice. If I have to do it by myself, I'm going to do it. If I'm the only one in the road doing it, I'm going to do it because that's how good God has been to you. Amen? Amen. There is no one like him. We just sang a song. There's something about that name. We should never stop giving God praise. See, the enemy don't want you to give God praise. Because he knows that praise sets up a wall that he can't get through. No matter what he throws at you, you still give God thanks. Because you understand it goes beyond the body. It goes beyond the body. And people who make it about the body, they always are in trouble. Because this body, it says the arm of flesh can fail you. This can fail. That's right. And when your, when your hope and trust is only in the flesh, then that's what you reap. And then you don't get no joy from that. Because it gets to a point where there's only so much doctors could do. There's only so much money could do. And when you pass that point, if your mind isn't renewed in Jesus Christ, then you're in a hopeless place. Amen? Amen? God is eternal. God means more because he's in eternity and that's where we want to be. So we need to be able to say I'd rather go through suffering now than lose what God has for me later. Amen? Amen. I remember a song we used to sing in church in the Bahamas. It says, I've seen the lightning flash. I've heard the thunder roll. I felt sin's breakers dashing, trying to conquer my soul. But I heard the voice of Jesus <coughs> bidding me still fight on. He promised never to leave me, never to leave me alone. Paul says, I've learned whatever state I find myself in, to be content. No matter what my circumstances or what my situation, no matter what difficulty I find myself in, no matter, even if my heart is breaking, you'll never know it because I continue to trust God. Even when my back is up against the wall, I will never give up. The prize is too great. Are you hearing me, family? Mm -hmm. The prize is too great. And the enemy wants you to forget the end of the race. He just wants you to get caught up in the middle and frustrated. And that's all you could see when you know there's a prize at the end. I believe that our faith should be strong in God. Because people who don't know God and don't have faith, they struggle big time. 
big time. Things will always be better the closer we are to God. Amen? Amen. Sometimes, I, kn I know we feel like God isn't near. But even in those times when you feel, see that's the humanness in us. But even when you feel that God isn't near, He's near. He's always near. And you always, you need to remember that. Have faith to know that it's not about your feelings. Because a lot of times, feelings come and feelings go. Amen? Amen. But you can't lock in to those feelings. Because you feel one way at 8 o'clock in the morning, by 11 o'clock, that totally change. God has given us this house to live in. But it's only for a short period of time. Is there anyone here who feels as if their back is up against the wall? You feel as if you can't see a way out? God can always make a way out of no way. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Have you ever been in a place where you couldn't see it and then all of a sudden a door opened that you didn't even see? That's the kind of God that we serve. You need... We all need to be able to say, yeah, I've seen the lightning flash. I've heard the thunder roar. But God has always brought me through the storm. Amen? Amen. Amen. Like the Bible says, troubled, but not distressed. Perplexed, but not despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. <coughs> And for this cause, we don't give up because we have Jesus. This world sometimes causes us to get lonesome. And sometimes, remember I preached a sermon over there, starts to look better than over here. When certain things start to happen, you ready to give this up. Jesus take me now, I ready to come to heaven. You know what I mean? Sometimes I feel that way every time I see that blue envelope come around the corner. I say, well, I just, I just sent a share to these people. <laughs> no, no. And I got to go check the date because it's like they make a mistake. 30 days gone already? <laughs> you all know what I'm talking about? <laughs> and that's just one bit. Yeah. The older I get, I find myself the looser I hold on to things. I know these things are just temporal. They come, they go. I love things, I love to enjoy life. But the older I get, I realize these things ain't here forever. And stuff changes, you know, and I don't know what the future holds and I'm just gonna try and walk in God's best for me today and be as faithful as I can and enjoy life. But I can't hold on to something so tight that if I lose that thing, I fall into a place of hopelessness. Amen? <laughs> Because you never know. Stuff changes. I have no control over a lot of stuff. Especially people. Are you all hearing me, family? Start to wear things loose. I'm loosening my grip. That's why the scripture means so much to me. See, you can talk like this when you get on the other side of things. I have been sick to death, but I'm on the other side. I know what it is to be in illness and terrible sickness and in the hospital and taking all these medications and operations and all sorts of stuff. But I also know what to be on the other side. And I realized that when I was in it, how little control I had. In fact, if any at all. Amen? Amen? It was out of my control. <coughs> and that's why that I'm on the outside. I'm grateful. I thank God. But I don't hold on too tight. So when stuff starts dropping off, I say, the Lord give it. And the Lord take it away. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen? Amen? I think of Doris. How many of y'all been to Doris' house? I've never been. No. That's a beautiful home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it ain't in the casket, bitter. That's right. Amen? 
That right there, I could go there right now. And Doris ain't there. She loved that home. Beautiful things in that home. And it's just a lesson. You don't take this stuff with you. And if you don't have nice family, they wouldn't even put clothes on you when you go with your dad and you're in the gasket. They tell the undertaker, put it in some nice clothes and wrap up in a sheet or something. And you don't know. Are you all hearing me? <laughs> I remember. I remember when Queen Elizabeth died. I think I, I, I said this to you all before. You all saw the funeral? All the pump and pageant, pageantry? All the, the soldiers and everything. And then they had the scepter and that crown, that gold thing, and, 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 and all of that. And when it was time for her to go down in that uh, oh. crypt, crypt, they say, remove the elements. Yeah. That hit me like a rocket. Mm. All that power that woman had. The scepter, the crypt. Were you all there? And they start one by one moving all them gold things from off her box and drop the box down in the hole. Gone. You don't carry these things with you. I'm trying to say we just need to be prepared and, and, and trust God, live our lives, love what you're doing, try to do it the best you can, try to stay as close to God because it's going to end. And when it ends, if your spirit is in the right place and you're in the right place with God, you will not only have had the best of this life, you will also be promised the best in eternity. Amen? Amen? That's all. Don't hold on to these things so tight that when they get taken away, you stress out and can't even enjoy the, the rest of the day. And <laughs> Stuff happens, people. I know what it is to be on the other side of stuff. I've done all the reasoning I could do. You know? Parents, you all go through stuff, and at some point, you all have kids, and at some point, you gotta let them go. You got to say, hey, I've done all I can do for you. I've tried to teach you the ways of the Lord. I brought you up in church. Now the decisions that you're about to make are your own. I will pray for you. If you need me, I'll be here. But do your best. Because at the end of the day, at some point, you lose control. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And they can do what they want to do anyhow. Amen? You love them, try to support them, but you got to wear them loose. You got to wear them loose. Start letting go. You can't take things with you. <clears throat> Family, if you can see it, it's temporary. If you could put your hand on it, it's temporary. It has temporary written all over it. Start wearing it loose. Don't matter what kind of car you drive, what clothes you wear, how much jewelry you put on, start loosening your grip. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Enjoy it while you have it. But don't let it be the thing that brings you joy. Money, clothes, cars, friends. Put them in the right place. Amen. But watch that grip. Because one day, they will leave you. After a while, all people start to leave you. Anybody know what I'm talking about? How many of y'all still have them friends who y'all was crying at the parents? I need to, uh, I need to go to who so-and-so. I want to go to so-and-so. How many of them you see now? Remember how we used to carry on? We thought he was dying if he couldn't go to somebody's party. <laughs> or we couldn't go out with somebody on the weekend or go to the mall with our friends. Mm -hmm. Snot coming out your nose. Got okay. a headache where you're crying so much. I used to cry so much that I used to throw up. <laughs> oh, <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being honest. I don't see none of them now. <laughs> Amen. Selfishness. Just wanted to have my way. Don't mean nothing, you know. But as you get older, we grow through these things. 
People come, people go. Stuff come, stuff go. Do not forget heaven. That's all I'm trying to say. Do not forget heaven. There is a prize. There is an end to all of this. If Jesus comes before we die, we will see him when he bursts through the clouds. Mm -hmm. If we don't, then most of us will die at some point. Maybe 80, maybe 90, maybe 100. Maybe 110. Oh, I'm Amen. <laughs> maybe 60. <laughs> maybe 70. But what I'm saying is it's going to end. This body is not going to go on. But prepare your spirit to move on. We do a lot to try and keep this healthy. We try to eat right, exercise, all of that stuff. But let's also pay attention to our spiritual welfare. <clears throat> Accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Learning of Him. Reading. Learning more about who we are in Him. Learning more about our, our identity in the Kingdom of God. What we can and cannot do. The kind of power we have living within us. Because don't forget, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives within us. We have that power. Resurrection power. The Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. We are just passing through this life. Ecclesiastes says, there is a time for everything. Unless we fully understand the reality of that, and that is, this too shall pass. <laughs> Amen? But we can have a good life. Amen? And Jesus wants us to have a good life. He wants us to enjoy life. But I suggest to you that the closer you are to Him, the more you're going to be able to live His best for your life. Amen? Amen. My mother and my father are deceased. <clears throat> Many of us are in that place. And when that happens, things change. There's a little bit of how life used to be that isn't anymore. We learn to live without that peace. But it changes things. Amen? Amen? A lot of things change in this life. But I'm here to tell you there's something that never changes. And that is Jesus Christ. Amen. When you are in relationship with Him, He never changes on you. Now, you may change, but He doesn't change. And that is why if we stay close to him, we will always realize how much he doesn't change. Because a lot of times when we go through stuff, it's not that he has changed his position. It's that we have changed our position. And the enemy has a way of stepping in there and making you feel like because you have moved, God don't care. Are you hearing me, family? When, when Jesus and God ain't move, we move. <laughs> right. Amen? Amen? But he will capitalize on that. But we give him the foothold. And that foothold is we begin to distance ourselves from God. We don't feel him the way we used to feel him. We don't talk to him the way we used to talk to him. We don't read his word and let him speak to us off the pages of the Bible like we used to. So then we begin to change. We get irritable. We don't answer people the way we used to. Because the closer we get to God and we stay with Him, He always says, don't answer a harsh word. Don't fight that battle. Let me fight that for you. And it's easy for you to let stuff go. Because what matters is Him. 
not the stuff. When we start distancing ourselves from God, then the stuff start to matter more. Anybody hear what I'm saying? Oh, yes. He makes the difference. Amen. Are you all hearing me? He makes the difference. Stay close to God. Things change. I wake up some mornings. I used to jump right out of bed. Mm -hmm. Now I got to sit on the side of the bed. <laughs> <laughs> so my body could make up its mind to do all this stuff. <laughs> it's like on cold mornings you got to go outside and start your car and let it run for a while. You know what I mean? <laughs> You don't just take off like you used to. But wait, wait, no. I'm serious. No. Oh I'm to that place. So we realize the stuff changes. Amen? Amen. And, and we got to accept these things. You know? We got to... In this world, I'm tired of people lying to me. People lie to me. People try to take advantage of me. They try to pull me down, drag my name through the mud. There's a lot of negativity in the world. If you look at the political world, if you look at the violence in the streets of the big cities, the shootings, trust is becoming a thing of the past. There's a leak in this body. And pretty soon, my soul is going to have to leave this building. It's getting old. I don't care how much I may dye my hair. See, I'm trying to get a new look right now. <laughs> Growing hair on my face. Yeah, it might be a midlife crisis. but I don't care how much you exercise, how much you eat right. Doctors, your eyesight start going. You start forgetting stuff. So now, rather than tell your stuff, oh, I got to do this at 4 o'clock. You got to write it down. <laughs> then you got to remember where you write it down. <laughs> <laughs> then you got to remember to read it. I have a sister, whenever you tell her something, she said, let me write this down because if I don't, this conversation uh -huh. never happened. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we, it, we all go through this. And these really are signs that this place is not our home. And it means that we're moving into a different season in our lives. All I'm saying to you that as you recognize these things, don't forget to build your spiritual life. Get it right. Keep it in a place where it's constant. Because this is going to go. But the Bible says our minds are renewed. So our spirits are in the right place. Your spirit needs to constantly be right with God. This can fail. But make sure your spirit don't fail. Amen? That's what I'm trying to point out. This is going to happen. These are the signs. You're hearing. I love my brother, but a lot of times I have to say, any time if you're hearing aid. What? <laughs> <laughs> he played that for well. It's, it's a reality of life. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> and it ain't me. It, it has something to do. You haven't sinned. It just means that the tent is not the way it used to be. Amen? Amen. But make sure that your spirit is in the right place with God, that spirit, that spirit man, stay connected. Amen? Amen. Don't take him out of the equation. Don't take Jesus out. Amen? Amen. We are changing. And like I said in a sermon many years ago, these are the times <laughs> when starting to look towards heaven. And as you read about heaven, it starts to look good. Mm -hmm. When you start reading about that new body, mm -hmm. you look forward to it. Mm -hmm. 
then all the pain and the aches of this one start being a reality. You're grateful for the life that you had. But you say, Lord, I'm ready. When you're ready, I'm ready for my new body. Mm -hmm. I'm ready. I want us to turn to John chapter 14. And I want to read a few verses. <coughs> John chapter 14. This is something we should not forget. John chapter 14. And it's in red, so Jesus is speaking. And he says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Trouble. Trust in God and trust also in me. There is more than enough room in my father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am and you know the way to where I am going and it's through Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. I'm going to read verse 6. Let us not forget, Jesus told them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. That's the way, family. He has prepared a place for us, but in order for us to get there, we have to go through the only way to get there, and that is through Jesus Christ. So if you don't know him, you can get to know him this morning, right where you are. Accept him, so you can be ready like Doris. Amen? Amen. Ready. Hopefully you'll be as blessed as she was and you'll go to sleep one night and that'll be it. Oh, yes. Amen? Amen. I think everybody would like to go that way. Yes. Oh, yeah. Amen? Amen? That is what you call a blessing. Absolutely. Amen? You lay down, you live 90 plus years, and you go to sleep. Wake up in the arms of the Lord. And wake up with Jesus. You can make sure of that this morning by accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. The only way is through Jesus. And he says, I've gone to prepare a place. That is why I'm here reminding you. Don't forget that God has prepared a place. Don't let the everyday struggles that you go through make you forget that there's a place. Amen? Because Amen. the enemy wants you to only see the difficulties that life may bring. Amen? Amen? And I'm here to tell you, we can handle our difficulties better the closer we are to God. Amen. And we won't spend so much time thinking about them like that. Because we know the one who holds the future, who can give us the strength to get through whatever it is that we may face. Amen? Amen. So if you don't know him, accept him today. As Lord and Savior of your life. If you're backslidden, just say, God, forgive me and come back. Yeah, and try me. very, try very hard to have a relationship with Jesus. Read the word as often as you can. Because the closer you are to him, the better you will handle life. In Jeremiah 29, it says, I know the plans I have for you. And then at the end, it says, to give you a what end? A hope. A hope and a future. future. And a future. And it says something else. Sure. Yeah, it says. <laughs> and, it says and a good end. <laughs> you have a good end. We also get that. He don't want a bad end for us. He has a good end for us, but it's his plan. And how will we know what his plan is? By reading the Bible. By staying close to him. Yeah. By constantly being in contact with him. That's what I wanted to say. Of late, the more I read this, the more I want to read it. Yeah. 
So I can just keep reading on and on. Okay. Amen. So, if you want God's best, if you want God's best, then you have to make room for God. Are you hearing me, family? If you want more of God, you have to make room for God. It's not just going to happen like that. You have to be intentional, and you have to go after God. And it says if you seek Him, you will find Him. If you knock, the door will be open. Another good thing and He wants to come in and be with you. That I have found in reading the Bible, it, it often sounds like a story. You know, when you read it, you know you're reading about the Lord, but it sounds like a story. Amen. I don't know if you understand what it means when I say it. It just goes together and just seems like a good, a wonderful, interesting story. And I keep reading. Amen. Put your hands together and let's give God some praise. So I hope you all got the message this morning. If you can see it, it's temporary. That means it's going to fade away. Let's try and fix what's eternal. Amen? Amen? Make sure your spirit is renewed. And that happens by reading the word and staying as close to God as possible. Talking to him. Listening for the Holy Spirit to talk to you. Amen? Amen. As much energy as you put into trying to keep this healthy, try and put as much energy into staying close to God. Yes. Your spiritual life is just as important as your physical life. Your physical life is going to end, but your spirit lives on forever. But you are going to choose where that's going to be. Amen? Amen? I hope you choose life with Jesus Christ. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming. I hope that something that was said that you will take it and read it and put it into practice in your life. 2 Corinthians 4. Read from, read from the first verse to the 18th verse. Ponder it. Amen? Thank you so much for coming. You are dismissed.